A free SR servant just for completing a story chapter? Yes, please. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a spotlight for the servant voted most likely to take foe's spot, Habitrot. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers that highlight her effectively, and an overall great comparing her to how she stacks up to the other four star servants. So if you're a fan of both fairies and cats, then make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell, so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up, and you can have off the channel. And now, on the Habitrot stats. Habitrot has a max HP of 11,760 and a max attack of 8,642. Her HP is above average even for a rider, however she does have one of the lowest attack stats in her class. Similarly, Habitrot has slightly above average HP for a 4 star servant, but low attack. When it comes to her command cards, Habitrot has 4 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 2 hits on her buster, and 4 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.57% and a star rate of 9%. Both her NP gain and star generating are solid due to those high hit counts, as well as her double arts and quick deck. Overall, Habitrot has a more defensively oriented stat spread with good utility, which is a good profile for a support, but not so great for a farmer. Taking a look at her skills, Habitrot's first skill is Lucky Spinning, rank A. This skill recovers one ally's HP between 1000 and 2000, grants them one turn of debuff immunity, and increases their star generating for one turn between 50 and 100%, both of these effects depending on level. Her second skill is Quick Spinning, rank B, which increases her own arch card effectiveness for three turns between 20 and 30%, and charges her own NP gauge between 50 and 80%, both effects depending on level, and it also deals 2000 damage to Habitrot as a demerit. And finally, her last skill is Guardian of the Bride, Rank EX. This skill grants one female ally invincibility for one turn, as well as Guts, reviving them with between 2000 and 5000 HP, five turns of HP regen, recovering their HP between 1000 and 2000, both of these effects depending on level, and it also grants debuff cleanse for any kind of ailments. However, as a demerit, it will kill Habitrot one turn after using the skill. As for her passives, Habitrot has Riding Rank C, which increases her quick art effectiveness by 6%, item construction rank B, which increases her debuff success rate by 8%, and Fey Eyes rank C, which increases her critical attack chance resistance by 12%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Habitrot has an Arts Quick deck with Quick Quick, Arts Arts Buster, and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Spinster Habitrot. This is an AoE Arts attack that deals damage to all enemies with between a 450 and 750% damage modifier depending on level. It also increases Habitrot's NP damage by 30% for a turn, deals damage that ignores defense buffs, and reduces Habitrot's own critical star absorption rate by 100% for 3 turns and it also generates between 20 and 40 crit stars depending on overcharge. Habitrot is all about that silver. For her ascension mats, she's going to require 5 phoenix plumes, 5 lanugos, 12 rainbow yarn, and 10 fairy scales. While for her skill ascension requirements, she's going to need 12 seashells, 12 giant rings, 20 rainbow yarn, and 20 fairy scales per skill. With all the Oberon and Morgan hype going on, it can be easy to lose track of our pink little friend, but overlooking Habitrot would be a big mistake, because she may very well be the most important new servant releasing for most players. Habitrot may not be as flashy and sexy as Fairy Tristan and Gawain, but she is hands down the best of the 4 star fairy bunch. Her stats are solid for support, with high HP, good star generating, and decent NP gain. And while she can definitely be utilized as a support, you may be surprised to learn that her best role by far is that of an elite arts farmer. Habitrot has the perfect skill set for farming, especially in free to play farming teams. And it's not an exaggeration to say that Habitrot is what you'd get if Arash and Spishtar had a daughter, which is a fanfic that I'm sure exists out there somewhere. But the main reason why Habitrot is so incredibly strong as a farmer and can draw such comparisons comes down to two of her skills. First, there's Quick Spinning, a 30% arts buff for 3 turns that also charges her NP gauge by a massive 80%. 30% arts up is pretty good, and the fact that it lasts for 3 turns is just ideal for looping since it not only keeps her NP damage up across all 3 waves, but also ensures that she gets even more NP refund from every wave, which helps with consistency. Furthermore, the 80% percent charge is just insane, and it essentially amounts to a free Noble Phantasm button. If you upgrade Habitrot's mana loading a pen skill or just use a Mage Association Mystic Code, then you can even NP with Habitrot on turn 1 from 0%, which is a strat that we'll get back to later. There is a 2000 
HP to merit, but it's largely irrelevant since if you're using the skill, you're already using Habit Trap to farm, in which case her HP doesn't matter. Plus, she has enough HP to spare anyway. But for as good as quick spinning is, Habitrot's best skill may arguably be Guardian of the Bride. This skill does a whole bunch of stuff, but best of all, it kills Habitrot. Which is a strange sentence to say, but if you played FGO for any length of time, you should know how paradoxically good skills that kill your servants are. Activating this will give Habitrot a delayed buff that can't be removed that kills her at the end of the turn. And in doing so, it'll swap in the next servant in your back row. So similar to Arash and Changong, this is a free swap in ability. But it's even better since it's tied to a skill and not a noble phantasm, which means it's even more flexible and easy to use at any time. But swapping the rotation isn't the only thing that the skill does. It also gives any female ally one turn of invincibility, a large health regen, guts, and a semi-debuff cleanse. Defensively, this skill is absolutely stacked, and it lets Habitrot keep a female ally safe from pretty much anything that the enemy can do. It's an emergency defensive button that keeps your DPS safe in any situation, which makes it perfect for challenge quests and boss encounters. The only drawback, of course, is that this skill won't work on male servants, so sorry Arjuna Ultra fans, Morgan wins again. And finally, Habitrot does have one last skill, Lucky Spinning. This one is nowhere near as good as her other two skills, but it's still strong. It's a targetable 2k HP heal that also grants an ally debuff immunity and double star generating for a turn. The real strength of this skill is in that incredibly low return cooldown which lets Habitrot basically spam the skill non-stop when using her on teams with Tamamo. It's incredibly useful in fights where debuffs are an issue, and it can be useful in crit teams for additional star generating. Overall though, level quick spinning first for that NP charge, followed by Guardian of the Bride if only for the great scaling on guts, and then lucky spinning last. Make sure you pick up mana loading because it's incredibly handy for farming, followed by the anti-berserker damage up since who doesn't want to deal more damage against berserkers. Habitrot Noble Phantasm is an AoE arts attack that increases her NP damage by 30%, ignores defense, generates a ton of crit stars, and lowers her own star absorb rate for 3 turns. This is the other half of what makes Habitrot such a strong support. She can generate tons of stars to this NP and her lucky spinning skill while also locking herself out of stealing them. So she actually makes crit DPS servants who lack star absorb skills a lot more viable and consistent. That niche aside, the main draw of this Noble Phantasm is the loop ability. It gives a decent refund thanks to the 3 hits, and the NP buff combined with Habitrot's arts buff actually gives this Noble Phantasm some good punching power. Because of that, Habitrot is incredibly strong in Castoria setups. She's an arts looper on par with the best of them. Her looping consistency is up there with the likes of Spishtar and Summer Melt thanks in large part to that massive NP battery which not only allows her to farm even some irregular enemy waves but also farm using CEs like Black Grail. That's right, we have a free to play servant who can farm using Black Grail. And because she can be obtained through the friend point gacha, you can also realistically get her to NP5 even as a complete free to play player. which just further increases her NP damage. It's not a joke to say that for most players, Habitrot may very well end up being the best farmer to invest in. But what makes Habitrot even better than most top tier farmers is that third ability of hers, that self-destruct skill. It gives her enormous flexibility. For example, you can have Habitrot use her Noble Phantasm to wipe out the first wave, then knock herself out, and swap in an even more powerful DPS to clear up the next wave or two. This is especially relevant in those 90 plus nodes where Habitrot may not be able to deal enough damage to the final wave, and you need to swap in someone with class advantage. Which brings us to what is probably the only knock on Habitrot, and that's her lack of NP damage relative to the other elite farmers. For example, she isn't going to out damage Spishtar, but she will do enough damage at NP5 to clear most content provided enough buffs. And her ability to contribute a ton of wave clear or support to the team, and then rotate out for an even better damage dealer or support, is just absolutely invaluable valuable, and it makes Habitrot viable for just any type of arts team. It's hard to narrow down the ideal team comp for Habitrot because she really can just fit anywhere, but as a farmer you definitely want to utilize her with the likes of Castoria and even Paracelsus for more free to play options. And in stall teams, she can do especially well when utilized alongside Tamamo since her cooldown reduction lets Habitrot abuse 
lucky spinning. Arch DPS servants that rely on critting like Kage Tora are also good support targets for Habitrot since she can feed them all the crit stars that they need while keeping them healed up and alive. Habitrot's bond CE is the promise after 2400 years. It increases the healing received by female servants by 50%. This can be useful in stall team setups but it isn't really necessary. Instead you're better off giving Habitrot CEs that help her with farming like Black Grill or Royal Icing or CEs that help her with supporting like 2030 and annual general meeting. It's not a future CE but it is worth mentioning Battle of Camlon since Habitrot can use this in conjunction with her third skill to grant the party additional NP charge after sacrificing herself. As for command codes, I like Priestess of the Silver Key on Habitrot since it helps her generate even more crit stars and it gives her an extra element of support by giving her the ability to remove attack buffs from enemies. Overall, Habitrot is one of the best 4 star servants in the game and should not be overlooked. Her insane NP battery and arts buff make her an absolute beast of a farmer in Castoria teams where she can easily loop even with Black Grail equipped. She can provide unrivaled crit support and defensive utility in challenge quests and her self-sacrifice skill makes her one of the most high utility servants in all of FGO and sets up all kinds of farming teams by itself. So all in all, Habitrot gets an S from me. She is a top 5 SR servant if not top 3 in my opinion and she beats out even most 5 stars in terms of her utility and farming capability. And because she's available in the friend point gotcha after clearing Lost Belt 6, there isn't really any reason for anyone to not get her to NP5 ASAP. So I hope you've all been saving friend points. And those are my thoughts on Habitrot. Like I said, simping for Gawain and Tristan is great and all, but don't let the muscle mommies and SM queens distract you from the real prize. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over in our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, all linked in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Brony out. Later.